Welcome back to Craftsman David. In previous videos I introduced this model train project. I showed you how I built the oak shelf that holds the track as well as this bridge that's on the feature wall of the roof. So now that all the pieces are made, I'm going to start hanging the brackets. I'm starting with the four corners of the room. I did a full CAD layout of the room so I know theoretically where the brackets are all supposed to be. So here I'm just marking them out leveling them up, and then I'll tap the screws to mark on the wall where I need to drill. Now I can put my drywall hangers in. Drywall can be sensitive to impact, so I'm tightening all these brackets up with a hand screwdriver. But I used the impact to put the shelf on. For this spot above the door, I'm going to try something I've never done before. You can see I have my mark on the wall. I'm going to try to pocket hole into the wall, but because this is drywall, I need to have anchors. So just like all the other hangers, first I'm going to mark where I need holes. I'm just going to use the pocket hole to kind of estimate the angle. Now I can install my drywall inserts, also at an angle. from the wall aren't going to be enough to hold this, so I'm going to install this ceiling mount bracket. And because the hangers have to hang from the ceiling, I bought a different style of drywall hanger. These ones actually will fan out up there. They have a 159 pound pull out, so it should be plenty. When it comes to mounting the shelves to the bracket, nothing beats these impact drivers. It's, they're so stubby that they can get up in here and I don't have to worry about hitting the ceiling. To avoid splitting the wood, I am pre-drilling all of the holes before driving in a screw. Now with my corners in place, I can put my tape measure up and take an actual measurement of how long this straight piece needs to be. I can also mark out where I need my next support brackets to be. We're running into a little bit of a problem. The board is straight, but the wall has a little bit of a bow in it. Um, and it wasn't going to be a problem if I used those style brackets, but because I did the brackets going up to the ceiling, I need to trim the back side of the plank. Well, doesn't that look like fun? The belt sander turned out to be the tool of choice because I can shave just the part that's touching the wall. Well, I sanded over to my line, and I had a little trick with the belt sander. It's hard to hold it a perfect 90 degrees, so it's going to be off. I'd rather have it be slightly beveled to the top side. That way, from the bottom, you'll never see anything. After shaving the board, I can cut it to size, just at the miter saw. And then I'm drilling and screwing it into place. First wall is up. Three to go. I have a little bit of an issue with this joint here. You can see where the corner meets this board. It's not centered on my bracket, so I can't get a screw to come down into the bracket. I just got a couple screws in the back. So now this front is lifted away, and I want to make this flush. So in order to do that, I'm going to use my pocket hole jig. I'm going to set it right here, and I'm going to angle a screw into this board. and that pulls that joint together nicely. To get the bridge in the right spot, I've already marked out where both brackets need to go, but to be doubly sure I have the brackets in the right place, I'm gonna mark it while the bridge is there. After I screwed the bracket in place, it turned out to just be a little too tight to drop the bridge in, so I'm going to loosen up these screws. You can see if I can just tap it over a little bit. In the end, moving the brackets didn't work. I had to shave the bridge, but now the fit is great. Tighten them back up. And just like the upper brackets, I'm going to find the place of the lower ones just by placing them under the bridge. 
Now, if I just put it in, any inaccuracies will cause these two supports to fight one another. So I'm gonna incorporate a little black gasket. This is the same material you use for like lining your drawers or your shelves. I'm gonna put that in here. What's also cool is you can see that this is not even where the bridge meets the shelf. It's close, but it's not perfect. Now with the addition of the gasket, it covers all those gaps and it looks much better. Last support is in. Now with the bridge just resting in place, not fastened, I can take measurements of how big this board needs to be. So one small issue I have is I have about a sixteenth of an inch step where the board thickness does not match the bridge thickness. To solve that, I cut a gasket. So I'll lay the gasket on the bracket. Now it's nice and flush. Now let's check out our handiwork. This joint, perfect. The bridge joint, also perfect. Since I'm happy with all the joints, I can go ahead and fasten everything down. I'll use a right angle attachment to get inside the bridge. And as a final touch, don't forget to cover the screw holes. With the bridge installed, the shelf ring around the room is complete. Now I can start laying track. I decided it would be easiest to put the track together in sections. The easy track is super simple to snap together. It's a good thing I'm just barely tall enough. So when setting up a bottle train, there's one more concept I want to introduce you to, and that's voltage drop. If you remember, I put this outlet here to power the train, so the part of the track that gets energized is right here. Now, I've taken that 8 feet of track that came with the original kit, I now have 50 feet of track. So, voltage drop is a problem through the steel track. By the time you're in this corner, the energy has to go through at least 25 feet of steel. So, to solve that problem, I'm going to run a copper wire all the way along the track and tie it in over here. That way, I have halved the distance the electricity has to travel through steel. Fortunately, it's not too hard to run the wire. They've already given you terminals on the underside of the track. I'm just going to use doorbell wire and run it in the groove that's under the track. Okay, wire's in place. I did tape it as I went along to hold it in the crevice. And I even have it terminated under here. These track sections have holes that are pre-molded for number four wood screws. They fit right in there and they mount flush. Just to make sure they're not so long that they poke through the bottom. This is a good length. I hope you enjoyed this four video series on building a model train for your kid's bedroom. I would say that this is my finest work yet, but really I think this is my finest work yet. Isn't she cute? Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this series.